your host and moderator for the session. The ongoing crisis due to the uh, COVID-19 outbreak is beyond doubt going to affect uh, uh, all economies and no one is spared across the globe. Uh, the magnitude of the crisis has humbled even the most powerful nations and businesses. Uh, well, the world will find a solution to fight uh, the coronavirus and businesses will be back on track. But for that to happen, startups will need to utilize this downtime to rethink and probably re-strategize to hit the ground running post the crisis. In this series, we'll talk to entrepreneurs who are adapting and staying above the water. Uh, first of all, uh, let me lay the uh, house rules for the day for our attendees. The panel discussion will go on for 30 minutes. Uh, this will be followed by a Q&A session for the next 15 minutes. Uh, if you have any questions during the course of the discussion, you can post them through uh, the Q&A option. We'll take up the questions post the panel discussion. Uh, we would also uh, request attendees to keep the questions within the scope of the discussion here uh, today. Uh, let me now introduce and welcome a very special guest for, for the day, Mr. Arvin Sanka, co-founder Rapido. Welcome, Arvin. Thanks, Arun. Thanks for having me. Thank you for uh, agreeing to uh, be a part of our series. I hope uh, the attendees who are here will benefit. So just to introduce uh, Rapido to our uh, attendees, uh, Rapido is a bike taxi aggregator and was founded in 2015. Uh, it's headquartered in uh, Bengaluru and uh, Rapido offers its services in around 95 cities uh, at, the, at the moment. So, uh, you know, Arvind, to just, uh, just to start with, uh, you know, uh, uh, what we would uh, want to uh, know from you that, uh, uh, when the crisis started, when it uh, hit, hit the first, what was the biggest uh, worry that you had, the biggest challenge that you saw coming to you uh, at that point in time? Yeah, uh, I think, um, so did we anticipate this to come? Uh, I don't think anyone has anticipated uh, in terms of how to plan for this or what's going to get impact because of this. But I think uh, when we heard that this lockdown is a kind of thing that's going to happen maybe in next two days or within a week, um, we sense this is coming because right from before the lockdown has announced uh, around a week or uh, 10 days before, uh, we are present in various tier one and tier two cities. Uh, we haven't seen a lot of impact in smaller cities, uh, but people in tier one cities as the uh, companies have given work from home or, or people started uh, traveling less, we started seeing the impact on the business coming down uh, in a lot of tier one cities one week before the lockdown. Uh, but we didn't see anything in tier two, tier three. So we, we thought maybe there might be some city specific lockdown that might happen. So we are okay, we can be prepared, etc. But all of a sudden, uh, Pan India going into lockdown definitely it has impacted. But a, a bigger worry for us um, is more about maybe a people like our tech team or an operations team maybe can work from home but what what is it for our captains uh, or our driver partners um, what is it for them or how can they even make money uh, because there are a lot of people who are dependent on us there are a lot of people who are who make extra money with rapido uh, so how will that change to them i think that is some, our major worry uh, and all the initiatives that we took is majorly to address those uh, and that is that is the primary thing that we had on board compared to anything else. Okay. So, so what was the first thing that you did? I mean, uh, why ask this is that we have a lot of uh, aspiring, uh, you know, startup owners and founders here. So they would want to know that, you know, when this kind of something, as I, I was mentioning to you that, you know, in no kind of business modeling, would you have foreseen such a situation where, you know, your, uh, your uh, revenue goes completely to maybe near zero. So what was the first thing that you did? You bought your team. What did you decide that, hey, listen, this is what we are going to do from here now? Yeah, uh, I think uh, so. Uh, first thing that we have done is um, we kind of, we started, uh, see, there are the uncertainties definitely to the employees and also to the captains on what's going to happen uh, or how, how are we well protected or well planned for it. So one thing that we started, uh, so there are a lot of, products that were in pipeline. There were a lot of 
planning that ha- that was there but but never uh, but never implemented before for example the first thing that we have done post uh, the lockdown is we started a weekly all hands meeting for our custom- for our uh, employees so earlier we used to meet once in a month or once in a quarter to update on what's happening etc cetera, etc cetera. but the first thing that we have done is i think we have to over communicate to our uh, employees in terms of what's happening in our mind or what are the initiatives that we are taking to make sure that we are well protected both from the employee safety perspective and also on the company financial perspective so that is one thing that we implemented right from the next for the first week after lockdown uh, and the other thing that we have also done uh, is we started the captain fund um, so we said okay the contribution from uh, the founders employees and also uh, the, um, the friends and families or our customers majorly uh, we we started a fund and we started um, uh, distributing daily essential to few of our captains i mean the challenge is we have more than 300000 captains uh, who are dependent on rapido um, but we have taken on the priority basis who are in the well need of money well need of daily essentials who are most impacted we started prioritizing for those captains and we started distributing daily essentials or, or uh, distributing some amount of money um, on a weekly basis to these captains that is the first thing that we have done and the second thing is we know the recovery is going to be uh, that going to happen maybe within a month or two months i mean when when it started we were, we were planning for okay a month later when the recovery is going to come how can we build the trust to our, for our customers uh, how can we build the trust to our uh, captains in terms of the safety measures that we are taking so uh, there are there are more than uh, six to seven safety measures that we started taking and started communicating to both our customers and captain community in terms of having mask as a mandatory thing so uh, if the customers are captains if any one of them doesn't have a mask uh, post this lockdown uh, then both of them have a right to cancel the ride and also we we are educating both the both the side of stakeholders of our customers and captains to ensure the safety is taken care of by themselves and if you see uh, see um, the reality is not everyone can work from home so the commute has to happen uh, post a lockdown uh, because there are a lot of sales executives who work uh, who use rapido there are a lot of uh, say uh, beauticians electricians plumbers who use rapido for their daily commute uh, because the reality is majority of indians doesn't own the vehicle yet um they have to use something or the other and we are much safer than any other ride sharing option uh, compared to public transportation which is again a, a closed environment public compared to a share auto uh, compared to an shared rickshaw anything uh, we are much more uh, because it's an open environment uh, and you are closer to the captain but you are not facing the, facing the captain uh, and you are not touching the captain you are sitting on a bike so there are some measures that we are taking uh, to ensure Uh, right from sanitizing the bike to san- uh, hand uh, hand sanitizer to wearing the mask as mandatory having our okay say to app as a mandatory thing for all the captains uh, before they going online um, so there are few of the th- these are few things that we are doing to ensure there is a trust that builds to our customers and captains um, i think that is those are few things that we are doing the other major thing that we have done is how can we during this lockdown how can we still ensure few of our captains will make their uh, will meet their livelihood um, and the first major thing that we have done uh, is uh, entering into logistics so earlier also uh, we used to do logistics uh, uh, and we used to work with various aggregators uh, but this just got uh, got um, enhanced uh, apart from going to just food uh, we went into grocery also uh, and now uh, we are um, now we are going to work with not only a bigger aggregators we are also going to a smaller uh, direct to consumer brands or uh, kirana stores who want to deliver to their end user um, so these are few things which uh, uh, where we have done gross uh, we have done initiatives to ensure there is an additional demand for our captains Uh, to make it still income uh, so just in last 3 months 3 weeks uh, our uh, our food delivery or grocery as a category we we scaled it more than 3 times just in 3 weeks because there is definitely a huge demand and i will definitely say that there are very few companies who are solving an on demand logistics problem uh, because we have huge feet on street or huge captains on ground the liquidity is the key and we were able to uh, fulfill those demand Uh, so i think these are uh, some ways where we are still uh, doing essential deliveries and making at least meet few of the livelihood for our captains uh, during these tough times mm-hmm. okay so uh, you know uh, 
So you have, uh, you know, moved away from your core uh, business that was, and you know, adapt, adapted to the situation definitely. But yeah. there are smaller players also, which we we've come across a lot of uh, these days, who are also kind of, uh, uh, you know, doing this, if not the same thing, similar sort of thing. So there is only that much of space for everyone. So how do you see, and also how do you see that, uh, you know, getting shared uh, by different players first? And second is that. Is this just a temporary adaptation, or is this something which we're going to see, which is going to stay with you for a longer uh, period of time? You found an opportunity here right now. Yeah. So uh, I will treat this in two different ways. One, um, I think whenever so th there is some kind, this is something which we haven't imagined that this this kind of thing is going to come. I mean, whenever we do some kind of scenario planning or business planning. You will say, okay, instead of five percent growth, well, we go to three percent growth or maybe minus five percent uh, degrowth. But you'll never plan for zero uh, revenue kind of scenario for sure. Um, but I think what happened for us is we have seen what are what are our strengths on how can we leverage this opportunity. I mean, when whenever we are looking at this is your core business, but there are some strengths to us. So, for example, if you see our strength is our dispatch uh, in terms of the way our operations work. So we are definitely asset light. Uh, so 100%. We don't own any of the vehicle. We don't. Uh, even though we are uh, we are present in hundreds hundreds of cities, um, we have around 350 to 400 people strength. Uh, so we are definitely a lot asset light, and the impact on our financials are a lot different compared to maybe some other companies. Uh, but the strength for us is the dispatch and uh, the captain uh, network. And also a geographical presence. So we are not present in one city or two cities. We are present in hundreds of cities. Uh, so that gave us an opportunity to solve something big throughout the country and which aligns to our vision, which is we look at our customers. Uh, we have two customers, not only our customers, but our captains are also a major part of our business. So we thought this is solving our captain's uh, earning opportunity. This is solving our captain utilization. Earlier, we were doing logistics quite from more than a year back. We started delivering food for more than a year back. But what happened right now is now this opportunity is just not, we used to have logistics as nine to 10% of the business, but post this COVID, we see the logistics being more than 25% of our business. I think definitely that kind of opportunity is something which we were not seeing it earlier, but now it has just scaled it because of this opportunity uh, in that way. But still this aligns to our vision, which is, to solve your uh, earning opportunity for your captains, and hence you can reduce uh, the customer pricing, or it can help you to serve the even more number of customers because you can reduce the price, and then it can be attractive to a lot of mass audience. So it aligns to a vision, and definitely a great opportunity which we were maybe underplaying earlier, but now we are planning to uh, maybe go for go for it at a full on. So kind of this situation has given you the opportunity to do something which uh, you were not sure of doing till now, but you know, now kind of uh, the necessity has got that to force you. Yeah, yeah uh, for sure. I think uh, maybe this is something uh, where I use in view of the discussions. So Rapido hasn't, it's not a last one year company. So we have been in the market for more than, more than four, four to five years. Uh, and Rapido is our uh, second startup where we pivoted from a previous earlier company called the Carrier to Rapido. Um, so if you see our first three years of Rapido, we play the game to not the lo not to lose. Uh, we the, a lot of people ask what is the differentiation for Rapido compared to there are more than thirty different companies who started by taxi in two thousand fifteen mm -hmm. when we first started. Um, but because of the market situation or because of maybe the market at the time, uh, we played the game just to not to lose and we just existence is a differentiation at the time. We don't want to die. Uh, that's how we played for the first three years. And if you see the last one year, we played to win. Uh, we were like, we have all the power and the market has changed and let's go all in. And now if you ask me, how are we going to play now? I think we are going to see the market on how it, uh, how it reacts to it. But definitely now we are in a position to play either ways. Um, either we can, uh, so either we can play offense or we can play defense, but uh, being a founder, um, we are we are wearing both the hats uh, in the same day, uh, and we are looking at the opportunities, and we are going to a lot of opportunities. We are going at much more faster pace. Um, I'll give you a lot of examples uh, that made this 
uh, this situation where the team has came in together and shipped a lot of products. Uh, if you see, we recently launched something called Rapido Lo Local, which is peer-to-peer -peer logistics. So if you want to send anything, you are sitting at home, you want to send some something to your friend or you, you need to get something from his grocery shop, you can use our logistics, uh, which earlier was not available. And this has been shipped within 10 days, right from the day we started, we thought of developing it. And these are some things where earlier we thought this will take a month or so to come range from uh, do the product thinking and then finally ship the product. But these kind of things has definitely enhanced. Um, I mean, team team understands these things for sure. I mean, earlier uh, to a very early stage startups, a lot of burden goes to only founders. Uh, okay, you think that okay, we need to. How do you come back? How do you think, etc. But once you are bit more than mature stage of more than series A and series B where you have hundreds of employees, unless you get a buy-in from your employees, you can't do a lot of things. You can't ship a lot of products um, because they have to understand the market. They also have to buy in terms of why are we doing it unless they are use you sell to them, sponsor to your users or investors. So I think uh, that is a great sign for us, especially where a lot of teams have taken, uh, have contributed to it. Um, I will tell you in last five weekends, I don't think we have any weekend as a concept, uh, especially for our teams. Uh, so it's both good and bad, but uh, it's a need of an hour and people understand that. Uh, and I think these are few, definitely few positives we see. Um, a lot of assumptions we are making, but I will see um, for us, at least post lockdown, we are seeing a huge opportunity that is there. If you play it right, we are going to, we are going to be a fastest, we will have definitely a fastest recovery compared to any other ride sharing but we can actually make it, uh, make it counted. So you just mentioned about, you know, staying above the water. So is that something that you would also want to tell other, uh, uh, other, uh, others who, who have businesses that, you know, right now you have to just stay above the water and come what may. So would that mean that you take uh, decisions which you would not have taken otherwise, but you know, the, the need would might, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, be there that you know you need to take some some those kind of decisions. Would that be something that you would uh, say to? Oh, I think uh, now I think it applies not only for early stage companies. A lot of series B, C, D, F, any kind of companies. A lot of companies. Uh, I I think the first thing that they are taking care is uh, how long, how can you increase your runway? Because yeah. because of this uncertainty, you never know. Uh, how long you can, maybe you can last, irrespective of whether you raised billions of dollars or you raised uh, hardly crores of rupees, right? I think uh, that is that is the primary thing. Uh, so whatever we do, whatever initiative that you take, uh, definitely you can uh, you can go off offense compared to a defense. But uh, if if that changes your equation of your runway and you do and you are uh, you are in that uncertainty for long, uh, I think the first the first underlying thing is. If you have uh, you plan in a way that you have enough runway, or you exist in the market, you for example there are a lot of a lot of companies who are just starting it up or who want to just raise capital. Um, I mean, definitely they have to think um, that it will take some more time than what you planned for. Uh, so maybe instead of uh, fighting for growth, instead of fi uh, fighting for how to change the business model, I think focusing on product uh, building capabilities. I mean that's what exactly what we are doing internally. We are building a lot of capabilities which are going to uh, which are going to be benefited once the lockdown ends. It might be two months from now or six months from now or a year from now. But these capabilities are long-term capabilities, especially for a companies like us. But a lot of early stage companies who haven't raised money or who are raising for the first time, uh, definitely a uh, good thing is they don't have a lot of overheads on the cost. Uh, so I. I personally suggest them saying that, uh, I mean, just stay, don't give it up. I think the only thing that, um, I mean, the startups are known for is uh, you, you definitely need to see the end. I don't think giving it up at least at this kind of thing, uh, because it's not in your control, there's no point of giving it up right now. I think you need to stretch to an extent that I think you tried for a lot, uh, tried for long. I think that's what um, Rapido is. When Rapido has started, we hardly had money for two months. Uh, we had to start something, we had to prove something in a market which is highly uncertain, highly competitive, but we just stayed there. Uh, we just tried to solve problems. We just tried to build capabilities and then slowly it paid for us. Did you also have to take hard decisions uh, during this period or, you know, the, what is the, the toughest part or the decision that you have to take uh, during this uh, entire episode? Uh, I think, uh, see, um, 
if you see the last one year has been very great for us uh, we scaled more than 10 times in the last 18 months um, so definitely there are um, a lot of lot of employees who has given their more than 100% um, but i mean so we haven't taken a lot of a uh, uh, lot of uh, tough calls uh, because one thing with rapido because i think we are talking for the first time um, um, one thing about rapido is we were always always irrespective whether we had money or we ne- we don't have money uh, we never spend lavishly uh, so we always have two years of runway irrespective of when you raise money uh, right so that gave us leverage uh, and that gave the confidence to the team that i don't think we are running out of money anytime soon um, but what made them think is uh, we don't want to come to the situation where we are t- taking a tough calls um, so that is that is what i mean we have not taken the tough calls yet uh, and we don't want to take um, because if we we have invested on people uh, and i think the opportunity is wide uh, wide open um, so the only thing that we need to prepare is um, what if we take instead of six months of recovery what it takes if it takes one year are we well agile enough to do something even more faster uh, because i remember three years back the way that we used to ship products versus maybe in a year back we used to ship products were different as we scale but if you see in the last two months the way that we started shipping products like i could see what we used to do four years back when we just started i think that is what uh, that's then that's what a great sign um, and I think, uh, so the major worry for us is we were not able to help a lot of captains. Uh, we were able to help maybe 10% or 15% of the captains, but there are still a lot of captains who we are not able to help. So the reason we are like going aggressive on scaling logistics, uh, because that is the other way of making money for these captains. So uh, one more question that uh, I mentioned to you, and I would want to know from you that, you know, from other people that we have uh, spoken to uh, during this period, you know, a lot of newer uh, models are evolving where, you know, people are collaborating uh, businesses. Like I, I'll give you an example of that. Unit. So do you also think that in the shared mobility space also, I mean, of course, there already has been, as you said, that you would use it to and, you know, delivery for others. But would there be more collaborations that you would see going forward from there? I think uh, uh, this is something where fundamentally Rapido believes in, where... Uh, if you have to scale, you have to take uh, help of someone or you have to help someone. Uh, that's the reason from last more than a year, we started working very closely with uh, the leading food delivery companies, uh, etc. Uh, even though you, a lot of people might see uh, it is a direct competition where our captains are their drivers, their drivers are our captains. But if you see fundamentally, there is a benefit for people to partner with us because for the kind of scale that we have, and the kind of optimization that we have, no one else can provide at the price point that we deliver a good from one place to other. I think, uh, and anyone can leverage that strength. Uh, why should I restrict to myself or why should I restrict to one or two companies that we are? So that's the reason I think uh, collaboration is going to, uh, going to be a way. It's not only for, it's only for us right now, uh, but uh, I see because post COVID, one thing that is going to happen is uh, a lot of marketing spend is going to go down for every company, every established company or very early stage companies. So especially when your marketing dollars are less, how can you reduce your CAC is by uh, piggybacking on someone, right? So maybe uh, someone has that distribution power, use his distribution power. Someone has that capex who has already invested in, go and leverage that capex that he has built in. So I think uh, in that way, uh, we see. Um, I mean, we are we are also working with a lot of other maybe a bike rental companies uh, who has a lot of uh, vehicles that are sitting idle. Maybe some of our captains want their vehicle; they can just rent it out from them. Um, it in that way to uh, the other way, as I said, is delivery companies. So we are working very closely with every grocery or food delivery company and uh, helping them to deliver to the end user. So I, I see uh, at least in our sector for sure, and I, I see that going to replicate in every other industry, not only with our industry. Also, uh, you know, I was just, just to connect. So you know, we had uh, we're also seeing a lot of development happening in the hyper local space in delivery in terms of you know grocery being. So you think that that's also one space that's going to uh, help uh, your kind of uh, business? Uh, you mean hyper local? Uh, hyper local deliveries, uh, you know, uh, where uh, you know, people w- uh, would want their groceries because now people would not want to move out of their houses. They would want things to come rather to their places from a trusted brand, from a trusted 
uh, the thing. So do you think this also opens up a lot of uh, opportunity for uh, uh, this kind of uh, you know, mass mind uh, delivery? Uh, Yes, yeah, Saurabh, I think uh, one thing that, again, uh, as we have seen, as I, as I said earlier, hyperlocal was, were restricted to few, uh, few categories, uh, like food maybe, or some, something else which has good, margin, good margins, but it was not extended to other categories. But I definitely see as more number of people sitting at home, uh, the hyperlocal need for, apart from food as a category, is going to increase. Uh, and definitely it's going to, see, uh, because we're talking about uh, layoffs, you're talking about um, salary cuts, you're talking about recession, etc. So now uh, the power of people paying for high delivery price, uh, again, uh, that is the only other variable because definitely safety is a factor, but people also have a constraint on how much can they pay. Uh, so the major thing is uh, there should, hyperlocal is going to be, uh, is going to take off, but uh, if it comes at a cost of very high delivery price, then again, it restricts the demand. So that's the reason uh, if anyone can figure out uh, the delivery fee being less, then I definitely see hyperlocal growing at much more faster pace than it is growing. Uh, it was growing in the last two, three years. So uh, uh, moving to uh, you know something else. So overall, overall, how do you see the, uh, the mobility space post the uh, uh, shared mobility space post the COVID, uh, COVID era? How? Uh, what new things are we going to see? How it's going to change from what it is right now and how it's going to be? Yeah, uh, so I think um, like any other industry, one commonality is uh, uh, the safety, uh, taking extra measures for safety and gaining the trust from the users uh, is going to be a key. So one thing, in again, even in transport or shared mobility, there are two to transport needs, for example, people going to airport, uh, people going for a business travel, or people going to a leisure travel for outstation, etc. That's going to take a hit uh, for sure. I think people are what people are going to do post COVID is definitely reduce the unnecessary commutes, uh, but only travel the necessary commutes, uh, uh, etc. So a good thing is we are in a necessary commute kind of use case where you are going to an office every day or a college every day, and you have to have to travel. Uh, and because it's a daily need, you look for an all you, you look for an option which is cheaper and which is uh, which is also faster. And that's where a rapido comes play. So we see that's as a positive sign, but. Definitely, uh, people going in public transportation, people going in a shared commute, like you're traveling with someone whom you don't know, etc. That's going to take a hit. So, um, so that's the reason. Uh, if you can build additional safety measures and gain the trust, uh, and as, uh, especially for us, people who are going on public transportation or shared mobility, other shared mobility along with other users, uh, this is this is the right time for us to. Uh, definitely attract those users and provide a safer option compared to other options. Now, the only thing is because 80% of Indians doesn't own the vehicle, uh, will people go and buy the vehicle just within a month or two months post lockdown? It's going to take time. People people are going to save money. People are going to, people don't know the uncertainty is going to come. So they don't want to invest a lot of money upfront. So that is going to happen. So, but still they will look for some other safer commute option. So if you are able to, uh, be a safer to any other compared to any other ride sharing, then I think then you will have an edge. So I think that is how it's going to change. Uh, it comes with uh, additional safe, uh, safety as an options. Uh, so you have to take care of uh, safety and build the trust for both your captains and your customers, especially. So does that uh, uh, drive the uh, cost of your operations? And uh, you know, will that mean? And I'm talking about across board. I mean, even for a uh, for, for a company which provides services in home or even any kind of these uh, services. So there's going to be an additional cost of all these safety me measures, yeah. or anything. So does that mean that, uh, you know, the unit charge uh, to customers is going to get a, a change uh, upwards? Yeah, I think uh, definitely yes. Uh, and I don't think it's, it's to our category, but for all the other categories, um, they have to, See, for uh, take a retail industry, right? If you are an offline merchant, um, right now every grocery shop has one guy outside who is just giving his hand sanitizer to the users, right? And who will pay the salary of him? Who will pay the salary of sanitizer? I mean, the price of sanitizer. So definitely, uh, it comes with additional cost. But I think uh, what 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 we understand from the users from our surveys, etc., is definitely 
people are okay to pay a bit extra to the additional features that you are going to take. Uh, but again, as I said, once if you don't factor in that, uh, if if that cost shoots up massively, then again you are not going to attract. Uh, you are not solving for mass audience. Yeah. So uh, it's always again a trade-off. But I think it will be additional cost. But again, uh, the beauty of marketplaces like us is how, how can you ensure that it will be minimal uh, and you will not just be a directly proportional to your scale. Okay. All right. So I'll just uh, have one more question before we move to uh, questions with the audience. Is that how do you see the uh, the, the the investment scenario, the, the type of the investors change now? Uh, will it like earlier? I'm sure things which were uh, easy to be said will not be now because you have to change your model. So a lot of people, as I mentioned, would have been ready with their business models, but they'll have to go back and maybe rethink uh, before they go to the investor. So what would be your advice uh, for uh, you know people who plan to go to investors right now? Yeah, I think just uh, wait, wait it out, and you know, uh, start their businesses maybe once uh, we are in a better, slightly better position. Yeah, I think uh, so. Generally, uh, to an again, uh, if you're talking about early stage companies who have interest capital. Um, so at least this is what worked for us. Or again, there is no one uh, one recipe of how can you for your investors. But I think uh, if your business model makes sense on an Excel, and if you're able to answer at least on an Excel on your assumptions, I think uh, that is enough uh, for me at least. Um, so if you're able to convince the investors saying that why you why there are some assumptions that you have taken and how can you how can you see the signs of it happening? Then at least you are uh, you can talk to investors, uh, but you yourself can't answer to a lot of your assumptions. Uh, then I don't see any point you going and brainstorming with your investors on how can uh, whether you can raise money or not. And uh, one definitely a thumb rule is it's going to take more time than what you thought of. Earlier you might have thought I can raise money within two three months. Then maybe it might take some more time uh, and at least for very early stage startups uh, now they have to uh, be prepared uh, in terms of questions key what is the your customer behavior post covid and whether you are the, the need that you are solving will that exist at least for next one year if that doesn't exist then definitely yes uh, your investment is going to be delayed more uh, than earlier so i think that is that is the additional additional preparation that is required for for startup founders but someone who has already raised money, I think uh, they already know the challenges. So, yeah, they know how tough it is to raise money. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm, I, I'm sure that there's going to be a, a sweet spot with, uh, between both the investors and uh, the uh, yeah. and the uh, uh, startup founders uh, to get that right kind of funding at the right time. Maybe. So, uh, you know, we'll just move on to questions. So, this was one question that we got from. Uh, Harshit uh, Sontalia, uh, it was uh, mailed to us. So uh, it says, given where the market is at the moment uh, and Rapido's user base expecting a transportation solution from them, uh, would Rapido open other avenues of serving their user base, say uh, bike rentals, where the customer is independent? You know, they can take their bike maybe and then go maybe for uh, something like that. Yeah. Um... Again, so uh, if you see um, our vision uh, is more about how can you be accessible uh, and affordable to users. Um, and our philosophy is um, is asset light. Uh, so we believe in that uh, uh, in terms of how can you build a business model where you are asset light, but still your stakeholders uh, get maximum out of it. Uh, that is, for example, our captains uh, in, in this case. So. Um, I don't want to specifically comment about uh, our thought process on rental or any other sector, but if any, if if our customers need any other uh, any other way of commute, and if they see um, that uh, we are not solving the need right now, but you will see us uh, uh, solving for their fundamental need. Uh, right now, it might look for a bike. Maybe if you're asking, maybe a year from now, uh, if if it changes, well, whether will we adopt? We'll definitely adopt. Uh, but right now, again, we are sticking to what we are doing and we want to master in what we are doing. Uh, that is something which helped us till now in terms of being laser focused on what we are doing uh, and solving that. Um, and if it falls under that, then why not? Uh, so right now, the, again, the focus is 
to solve the transportation need on a bike what are the additional measures that you have to take and build the trust uh, and the other thing is how can you uh, get your captains make additional income so we are only looking at these two things uh, and whatever initiative that we take will fall under uh, these two uh, solving these two needs okay okay but i think uh, you know every business should be open to uh, your changes and adaptation and that all of the volume and business is also like you know like that could be new normal i would say that yeah yeah definitely again as i said um, whether will adopt is definitely yes we will adopt new business models uh, but good thing is now we have uh, we have we have team who can also who also contribute into a lot of our thinking it's not about what i think versus what the other founder think it's more about if it makes sense as a leadership if it makes sense as a team to do something new then we'll definitely adopt to the new needs uh one uh, one question that we've got here is that uh, how are you going to get your captains to uh, uh, need not be uh, so that you know they are not so fearful to start the service what would be the hygiene standards that would be take to take that uh, both driver and customers of course to uh, to some part here yeah uh, so i think uh, so especially uh, i want to talk a little bit about uh, how um, about our captains uh, so here definitely uh captains are also um, or, or maybe once uh, uh, after this lockdown one captain will be work, uh, traveling with more than 10 to 15 different customers so captain being more uh, more uh, impacted is higher than the customer so what we what we want at least from the captain side is uh, we are taking every measure where the captain will not be the captain is protected i mean right from providing insurance to our captain say even in case something happens where we don't want him to be financially uh, troubled for from this covid situation so we are going to offer him both uh, uh, insurance on the health side and also hospital cash kind of a product uh, that is one thing that we are doing it uh, but the other thing is also again as i said um, uh, distributing hand sanitizer distributing masks to our captains uh, and ensuring they are uh, so we we are going to take feedback both from the customers and also captains whether um, the other guy is wearing the mask or not uh, and we are going to be we are going to take very stringent step, steps on ensuring that people do it uh, because uh, definitely we don't want both side of our uh, stakeholders uh, both our customers and captains getting impacted so i think uh, those are again as i said apart from safety measures that we are taking insurance is one other thing to uh, to be um, at least for, on the captains uh, to make sure that they are well protected uh, both financially also uh so uh, now uh, we have a question we'll give the uh, if we can give the audio to uh, mr ajit vikram kapoor ji thanks arab hi uh, hi arvind uh, thank you so much for the fantastic insights on how uh, rapido is planning uh, on ensuring the safety uh, just wanted to understand that now that you have entered the uh, as you mentioned that you were also looking at that earlier the last mile delivery space do you see an increase in adoption of electric cycles and how is rapido opening themselves to alliance getting into an alliances in this segment thank you um, yeah uh, sure so again um, maybe uh, see right, right now if you see the way that rapido works uh, we work with a uh, captains who has their own vehicles already uh, and who want additional income uh, from their existing asset that they already own uh, so that is one of the uh, thing where we think we need to empower people who are already invested um, but if if you see in the last 6 months definitely there is uh, there are definitely new things that we are exploring in terms of how can we open our platform beyond people who uh, people who having their own vehicle to people who don't even have the vehicle but who wants to make money and that's where our partnership with few of the bike rental companies has been played a role where you don't have a bike you can rent the bike and then start making money um, so um, definitely if you're asking me that are we aligned to partner with anyone definitely yes um, again whether it is electric or petrol again we don't have that kind of uh, priorities but uh i strongly believe uh, electric vehicles uh, especially electric two wheelers in india can only scale with either last mile delivery or with people transportation because there are more savings if you travel more and more travel can only happen 
for delivery or for uh, for trans for, for a taxi but you for your daily commute you hardly travel 10 15 kilometers you can't get uh, your benefit of spending extra on the capex so definitely if there is any player who are ready to uh, rent out or lease their electric vehicles to our captains um, the only thing is we need to have enough uh, takers for that product but definitely we are more aligned for collaborate uh, and then doing it we already did a lot of pilots uh, definitely we have very strong uh, belief that electric vehicles in india will take off only with two wheelers uh, under two with taxi or bill and we are better positioned because we do cross utilization our drivers travel more than 100 to 120 kilometers per day so which your savings are a lot more uh, compared to a petrol vehicle or an electric vehicle okay perfect uh, thank you so much uh, next question will take from uh, praveen prakash Can we have the audio of Praveen, please? Okay, I think uh, 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 we are. I'll just read out the question to you, uh, Arvind. Uh, how do you foresee uh, about the uh, future of ride-sharing business? As people are quite uh, skeptic about ride-sharing due to COVID-19, what measures need to be taken for betterment of ride-sharing business? I think he wants to have an overall view of that. You know. Yeah. And how do they feel uh, safe about uh, taking that ride sharing? Yeah, uh, I think uh, maybe kind of uh, where I answered it earlier in terms of how do you build the trust of your users um, from the safety measures. Again, I said uh, if you see globally, um, again apart from India, other other countries where um, where they have gone through lockdown and post lockdown, what are the measures that they have taken? I think there is a lot of learnings that we can take from China, or a lot of learnings that we can take from maybe. Australia or New Zealand, which where they are in the phase of post lockdown and where they started seeing early recovery. Uh, so there are definitely um, some of the measures in terms of ensuring uh, safety. Whether you are traveling on a cab, whether you are traveling on a bus, or you're traveling on a bike, what are the additional measures that you can take? Again, a few of the things which I talked earlier, but few of the things is more about uh, communicating to your users, both your customers and captains, uh, in terms of. uh what are the measures that you are taking uh, because a lot of people uh, don't know what what are the measures that you are taking so making them transparent uh in terms of what you are doing um again in our case again as i talked about ensuring um, from the captain side ensuring our ticket safety app or um, having mask as mandatory or hand sanit or sanitizing a bike before and after every ride Uh, so these are some things on a bike, uh, at least for the, for us perspective. But maybe the similar solution might be there for an auto or a cab. But it's more about build that additional trust, and I think uh, all the necessary commute will happen. So you, uh, ride sharing is the way to go because I don't think people can buy vehicles anytime soon in the next six to eight months for sure. Okay. All right. Uh, next, we'll take a question from uh, Abhishek Singh. Uh. Hey Saurabh, thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are. Please go ahead. Thank you, Saurabh. Thank you, Saurabh. Uh, Arvind, it is great to know the efforts Rapido is taking for you know, for the well-being of the uh, captains and you know, giving a runway to them as well. Kudos to that, uh, Arvind. So my question is around uh, during the situation, a lot of captains would have shifted base from you know, one city to another, or would have found another way, another means of uh, you know livelihood. so my question is uh, how are you uh, taking care of the availability of captains to your b2c customers uh, also because you know a lot of captains would have now been uh, stable and been accustomed to the b2b uh, segment of the rapido business yeah uh, akshay i think it might be a bit controversy that i am what i'm going to talk but uh, uh, trust me uh, i don't see people have got any other opportunities to make money uh, people are people are losing jobs people are not having enough ways to make money uh, i mean we have enough stories i mean that's the reason we feel really bad where whenever we get okay. some comments on twitter or facebook where we are helping but still there are a lot of people still looking out for jobs right so i uh, that's the reason i see uh, if we are able to take enough safety measures captains i think i am seeing uh, see during covid during lockdown in red zones we are doing deliveries i mean uh, people are risking their lives just because they don't have any other way to make money uh, and that is a kind of reality and i i really we really feel bad when we ask them to go to red zone and deliver uh, but 
uh, but people are sitting at home and you also need to serve your users who are not able to come out and that is uh, you can at least control the safety measures of the captains because they are coming through our marketplaces so that is that's where the technology plays a role at least uh, on the on the especially on the b2c side also ensuring that people are not getting dropped at drop uh, at the red zone areas or people are not getting picked up from red zone areas so there are additional measures that we can take to ensure they're not going to very high containment areas but uh, trust me i don't see um, people got an opportunity to make money elsewhere so um, if if we can ensure the safety of our captains uh, we see uh, captains believing on the platform and coming back uh, and uh, making their livelihood earlier uh, as how they used to do so i think that's the reason we are more focused on um, make them be, uh, feel safer and we see people coming in okay all right uh, thank you so much uh, uh, arvind uh, i have a very interesting question from uh, uh, an attendee uh, i hope you would want to answer this one uh, what are your plans for employee appeals okay appraisals yeah, i think uh, that's what i covered when you said uh, what are the tough calls that we have taken yeah. uh, one of the tough calls um, uh, to majority of our employees who has really performed well in the last one year even though we are not able to give them cash appraisals we are giving them equity appraisals to all our employees who has given their best efforts um, i think uh, being invested through equity uh, through our employees Uh, earlier because as we crossed over series b uh, to a lot of our employees uh, um, only to certain scale of employees we used to give esops uh, but now post is covid uh, where we were not able to give cash uh, hikes because again uh, every month of additional runway is good for us um, and good for well being of the company than an individual uh, so that's the reason we took a call uh, again we can we talk to every employee we talk to all the leadership uh, and uh, we got we we took a buy in saying that Uh, we are going to give um, equity based appraisals than cash based appraisals at least for this uh, this cycle and when a lot of companies are doing uh, huge mass layoffs i think uh, we are the only travel company at least i'm proud to say that we didn't do any mass layoffs okay that's that's very good news uh, from uh, your end uh, arjun uh, because uh, you know a lot of people uh, we have heard you know about layoffs and all this stuff and uh, i mean of course businesses are under pressure so they'll have to take those things to stay uh, in the game i hope uh, that things will very soon uh, change uh, any last thoughts from you before we say uh, i invite you all again yeah uh, i think um, so to a lot of um, entrepreneurs who are just starting or who are going through a tough phase uh, i think um, um, again covid might be the first thing that um, i mean a lot of lot of a lot of uh, investors a lot of people who has gone through 2001 to the 8 crisis told that they have never seen things like this earlier even though there are financial crises that happen this is the first of its kind so uh, it's definitely not in our control uh, but i will definitely say covid is not the only thing that at least as a founder that we face uh, at every phase there are difficulties i mean when at least when rapido has started 4 years back no one lot of investors didn't believe that we can uh, actually go through it lot of investors um, um, have no one thought that people will sit behind a stranger um, no one thought that uh, along with um, a competition we can actually um, thrive through uh, so there will be uncertainties uh, covid is only one among those uncertainty but this this is something which uh which might take much more time than what you expected i think uh, and but as as a founder as a founder um, again as i said being exist in the market that is going to be your differentiation and i am pretty sure that if you if you pass through it uh, a lot of people say again i'm not the only one but uh, if you can have a base that you can pass through it i think you can get best out of you uh, i think that's what happened for us we have gone through our own personal crisis in 2016 when a lot of companies are not getting funded or 2017 first three years where we were not able to raise a lot of money when uh, a lot of players were able to raise uh, a lot of capital but uh, what we only focused on is if you are adding additional value to the users uh, if you are able to um, solve a very big need especially in our case we were very confident that things will change Uh, but we just need to wait till that time uh, sometimes it might come uh, at much much more faster pace uh, but i don't think any company uh, get successful just like that people will go through this crisis uh, covid is one among that uh, so i don't want people to give it up 
uh, for sure. I think that's what an entrepreneurship means. Uh, we were never, uh, we never came with a mindset of I will give up if things are bad. So I think stay there. Uh, definitely, it's going to take some more time. You will understand. So it's not a failure from your side. So I think that is a personal advice that at least I want to give to founders who are just starting, who are just raising money, and who are getting uh, or who are getting demotivated when investors are saying no. I went to more than 100 investors personally, uh, and only one investor said yes. So I think I have enough experience to say that, yeah, there will be a lot of rejections, and then yeah, it's okay. Uh, thank you so much, Arvind. Uh, as you said that you know, uh, like someone who's uh, someone told me uh, that you know there's a very uh, uh, about uh, uh, that we go to hundred people, but uh, you know you just need one person to say yes to uh, you know uh, to believe in you to start. So and of course uh, uh, this culture when uh, uh, you know everything uh, uh, everyone's uh, worried about what's going to happen in the next uh, two three months. Uh, uh, great encouragement from uh, from you for uh, uh, the coming times, and uh, we can see that you know hopefully uh, uh, post this COVID, we will find ways uh, to uh, you know overcome the situation, and uh, 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 everything will be you know if if not normal immediately, but we'll find ways uh, to make uh, ourselves safe and uh, start this wheel of uh, the economy start, uh, uh, start again. So. Uh, thank you so much for uh, uh, for uh, uh, being with us today here on our uh, resilience series, and uh, thank you to our attendees as well uh, for coming in. And I hope to see you on again uh, for uh, uh, with, uh, in the, during this series. We'll have uh, at least uh, one a week. Uh, and uh, uh, stay safe, uh, stay strong, and uh, uh, hopefully we'll all try it together. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much, sir. Uh, uh, Pleasure. Uh, thanks for, uh, very much for having me here, but uh, happy to learn from your rest of the series also. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sir. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Bye.